Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Data Dispatch. I hope you guys are having a great day. We're going to be talking about Palantir Technologies and really what we can expect in the market, especially with the technical patterns that are being set up right before our eyes. And also we have some very, very volatile events that are going to be occurring regarding the probability of the first interest rate cuts because we have the Fed that's going to be testifying to Congress on Tuesday and Wednesday, and this can cause big market moves. We're going to be breaking this all down, especially looking at some interesting critical data on PLTR, what we could expect down in the future, and really how it compares as a top competitor to some of the other big AI stocks out there. So if you are a new or returning viewer, thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe for daily videos, and of course, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just collecting all the data and did it, it is batching it to you. Now, what we see in the screen here, remember, Palantir Technologies had an incredible Friday, the last trading session closing at 27.23, really breaking past that basically $26 resistance and buy point. And what we see with PLTR is being set up in this cup and handle pattern that everybody is talking about. And specifically, if you look quickly on here on Twitter, talking about on the weekly charts too, you see PLTR has been really wanting to hit these recent kind of, I want to say, highs that we have not seen since 2021. We see predictions over here that a break over 27 could be targeting $45. And another wonderful picture here that I thought was funny, that I thought was funny. Finally, a cup and handle pattern for PLTR. I'm all in at 27 instead of $6. Now, what we do see with PLTR, and one thing that I did appreciate is we're seeing that short volume is staying relatively consistent. Um, I like this in terms of the chance that PLTR hopefully is not entering into this overbought type of territory. So the fact that PLTR is still staying at the same relative type of short volume, even though we're seeing these prices that are increasing, we're seeing buying pressure, momentum, especially with earnings that is basically about a month away. We don't have that official announcement date. What this is showing me is that more people are taking a bullish position, both on the retail and the institutional side. Now let's talk about what we do have going on in the market. And that is we have Powell right here. He is going to be testifying against Congress with inflation data that will be due later this week. Now, right now for Sunday night, what we're seeing is S&P 500 and NASDAQ futures that are actually starting to take a little bit of a decline. And this could just really be to, due to uncertainty that's happening within the market. He's going to be testifying, like I said, on Tuesday and Wednesdays, and they're going to be looking for shifts on comets talking about monetary policy here, talking about the slowing economic data if that continues, that's what the market wants right now, then the prior comments will point to rate cuts hopefully later this year. Right now, the market is expecting a 78% chance of a Fed rate cut by September 7, 18, the 17th and the 18th meeting, and with a 77 basically percent chance of two cuts this year. These are pretty high probabilities. So if we see any changes, we could see volatile shifts within the market and the June CPI data report is also due on Thursday, the soft jobs report on June 5th. And we have PPI inflation data that is due on Friday. This is why I'm talking about this week is really going to be big in terms of what type of inflation, uh, what type of inflation metrics that really will be leading to a big impact in the market that will have an impact on AI stocks. And of course, Palantir included with volatility that is ahead, especially like I said, earnings here is now about a month away in terms of estimations at the actual guess of about eight cents per share. Let's take a second to thank the sponsor of this video, Moomoo. Now, Moomoo is your one-stop trading app that offers free commission trading along with very powerful investment tools, making it easier for you to make those confident decisions within the market. Right now, new users can sign up utilizing my welcome bonus down in the description, and you can get up to 8.1% limited time APY on uninvested cash in up to 15 free stocks with a deposit. You also can get up to a $300 transfer in bonus. You do not want to miss it on those rewards. Make sure you check out Moomoo Moo down in the description. Back to the video. Now, what I want to talk about Palantir, an interesting article here by Molly Fool, talking about an one unstoppable 
Now, one unstoppable stock here talking about could it really join the one trillion dollar club? We're talking about the Magnificent Seven here, Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia, the, some of the biggest stocks right here. Now, this is a very big and more of just an attractive title, a very big, I want to say, type of prediction to make, especially where PLTR is at right now. But one important thing to understand is that it does only have a market cap, market cap of $58 billion. And investors really need to see the speed of which generative AI is being adopted to understand the magnitude of this opportunity that Palantir is addressing. I do agree with this paragraph right here, basically saying that right now, it's only been in the last year here that we've really seen this AI boom that is really taking basically the market and the world and our society by storm. And Palantir is really addressing the needs of these companies that want to utilize AI into their products. And we see them taking advantage of that by being a leading competitor. And I think the decades of AI experience is one of the main variables that has helped push PLTR to really be a top competitor within the industry and especially for a SaaS stock as they really build their credibility and their trustworthiness with US intelligence types of products. Now, as we see AIP, we've talked about this all the time, developing this really go to the market approach in terms of a commercial side of things and perspective. And we've seen that AIP in the recent earning call has already noted 915 organizations have participated in these boot camps. And this is really outpacing the company's original predictions for the boot camps that were going to be conducted. That's also great, important thing. Now, the long track record here, talking about this path to $1 trillion. And what we're seeing with consensus with Wall Street, one of the big things is that POTR does have a very high valuation right now. So that's really a big wild card talking about how much of a premium that investors really are paying for Palantir right now. However, this demand is being supported. And this is why data dispatch, you know, in our opinion, we're still seeing bullish bullishness in terms of price action. I think the $30 could be tested here in the near future. Forecasting that though, and typically, one of the big variables, I think, on this actual true path to $1 trillion is how much of market share and basically valuation is going to be coming into AI stocks in general, into that industry. And if Palantir could really stay as a leading competitor, then I think it will accumulate a lot of that market share that will start to trickle in. We're seeing big analysts that are basically estimating that the AI market could be worth between about $2.6 and $4.4 trillion annually and that if Palantir continues along its current trajectory and continues to really take advantage of the AI opportunity, talking about it could reach this one trillion market cap sooner than later. Now I think it's important to understand what that actually means in terms of a one trillion dollar market cap. We're talking years and years down the line. I'm not trying to say hey this is going to be the one trillion dollar market cap next year. <laughs> but talking about if this whole AI boom continues to rally and it's not just a bubble here that's going to have a strong correction and if we see the advancements that are currently growing that are continuing to grow then i think palantir here had does have a good opportunity and that is the good news for palantir is that the sustainable boom over the next coming years they're doing a good job right now staying on top of it and really staying on top of the competition because there's going to be a lot of companies that are coming say hey we can do it for cheaper and are going to bring a competitive type of atmosphere to the industry we're seeing that right now however i think the big contracts that plcr has already established with the governmental side of things has really been a reason why plcr has been able to keep that edge. Now let's talk about what we are seeing with NVIDIA. And right now, NVIDIA, we've seen a recent analyst that came out here with a little bit of a downgrade in terms of price targets. However, that's not compared to a lot of the different targets that we are seeing. Sitting right now at 125 bucks, we've seen targets up into the 144. So Morgan Stanley, we've seen 150, still continuing after this post 10 for one stock split. One big thing, remember, that NVIDIA did that I think is keeping me bullish, especially, is that they transitioned, remember, to that yearly release schedule for their new chips when the two-year cycle was previously the market standard. What this is doing, and I think is a really, really big decision by NVIDIA, is forcing the other chip companies like AMD and Intel to basically follow suit. And 
if NVIDIA has the resources to stay on top of these technological advancements with their AI chips, this is rushing AMD and Intel to try to develop the latest technologies. Now, they had two years, now they have one year, and they need to keep ahead with NVIDIA. And this is why I'm still staying bullish on NVIDIA, because of the incredible success that we've seen, even though it is at the tops right now, and as recently, even for some time, for a short period of time, was the most valuable stock in the U.S. stock market. So what we're seeing here, traditional financial lead for NVIDIA. I think we're still going to see it outpace its competitors. And also, I agree that Palantir is going to continue to continue Let me know down in the comments, what do you think is going to be happening with interest rates this week? Do you think we're going to still see that probability of the first cuts staying around the 80%? What do you think is going to be happening if we do, unfortunately, see some bearish inflationary data? And specifically on Palantir, what is your short-term price target here over the next two to three months? Do you think the technical pattern is set up for PLTR to push those 30s? Or do you think we're going to see a sell-off before we can get to that point? Peace out, take care, and I'll catch you guys later. Have a wonderful week.